With a custom AMD CPU and over four teraflops of graphics processing power, the PlayStation 4 is the perfect game system for playing Pac-Man? Yeah, that and tens of thousands of other retro classic games from over 70 different consoles from four different decades. And you're about to get in on the fun by learning how to install RetroArch on your jailbreakable PS4. All the steps are included here, and we're starting now. Be sure to check the video description for the latest show notes and updates. You'll also find links to products and websites featured in the video. The first step in the process is to visit the GBA Temp website to get the latest version of RetroArch in the RetroArch Cores installer for the PlayStation 4. It's linked for you in the description. Scroll down on the page until you see the download section. Right click on each of these links so that you can open them up in separate tabs. They're going to link to mega.nz for two separate downloads. Once you have both of these download links open in your browser, you can visit them separately to get each separate download. The first of which is the RetroArch package file itself. Come down to the download link in the bottom right corner and click the button to download the package file directly to your downloads folder. And the second one is the cores installer for RetroArch on PlayStation 4. Again, just click the download button in the bottom right corner to grab this file, but do make note it's very large, well over one gigabyte, so it might take you a few minutes to get it downloaded to your system. And to transfer game system and other files over to your PlayStation 4 over USB storage, you'll also need PS4 Explorer. It's hosted on the GitHub and linked for you in the description. Scroll down on the GitHub page to the Assets section and click the download file shown here. Okay, I'm going to slow the roll here for just a minute so we can take a look in the Downloads folder and see what you're going to have in there and what you'll need. You've downloaded three different package files to your Downloads folder, and here's what they are and what they do. There's RetroArch, which is the actual software itself. You'll also have the RetroArch Core installer, which is a package file. And you'll have a package file for PS4 Explorer. In addition to all of this, you're going to need game content and also system BIOS files for key game systems. In this case, I've just got one folder that has the system BIOS files, along with a couple of ROMs each in an SNES, NES, and Sega Genesis folder. Insert a USB drive formatted in XFAT format into your computer. I named this USB drive subscribe so you won't forget to subscribe while you're here. Hey, we've got a great community here and you belong here with us. In the downloads folder, you can grab everything, every file, every folder, everything, and copy it, and then just drag and drop it directly onto the root of your USB storage. Once you've got all of the files and folders copied over to your USB storage, you're done with it. You can close out any instances of File Explorer, eject your USB storage from your computer, and put it into the rightmost USB port on your PlayStation 4. You'll need to activate the jailbreak on your PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 4 Pro. Go to your web browser and then navigate to your favorite location for running the jailbreak process. In this case, I'm using the Hakurifu, 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 that website. Whichever exploit site you use, I'd recommend if they have Goldhen listed that you run Goldhen. It's my understanding, at least at this point, that Goldhen is more up to date than Mira, and it performed really well with RetroArch. In any case, whichever homebrew enabler exploit you use, let it load up, and once it's complete, you can press the PlayStation button to go back to the main menu of your PlayStation 4. With the jailbreak enabled, now you can install the three package files you put on the USB storage. Go up to the top navigation and scroll to the right to Settings and select it with the X button. Inside Settings, use the D-pad to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the list to Debug Settings and select it with the X button. The first listing you'll see here is Game, select that with the X button. Inside the game menu is where you'll find a package installer. Use the D-pad to scroll down one listing to package installer and select it with X. Inside package installer, you'll see a listing for install all. Select it with the X button. This will install all three package files one at a time onto your PlayStation 4. Once all three of the package files are installed, leave the USB storage device in the rightmost port on your PlayStation 4. Just press the PlayStation button on your controller to go back to the main menu. There's a rhythm to loading RetroArch in its cores. First, just load RetroArch by selecting it with the X button. It's going to set up some key files and folders that you will need in order to proceed forward. The only thing you need to do with RetroArch at this point is close it. From the main menu, just scroll down to quit RetroArch and select it with the circle button. Inside RetroArch, X and circle are swapped. Now that RetroArch has set up its file and folder structure, you can run the RetroArch core installer. Navigate to it with the D-pad and select RetroArch Core Installer with the X button. And at the confirmation pop-up, select OK with the X button. 
Once all of the cores have finished installing, select OK with the X button to go back to the PS4 main menu. You can launch RetroArch content directly off of USB storage, but we go big or go home here. Launch PS4 Explorer to access the content from your USB drive. The first time you launch PS4 Explorer, you'll need to select your language, in this case English. Pick your language with the X button. Then you'll be taken to the main menu. What you see here is the root of your internal storage, whether it be hard drive or solid state drive. To access the USB drive, press left on the D-pad. Let's start by copying the ROM folders over from USB to internal storage. To select each one of these, highlight it using the D-pad and press the right one button. That's going to leave a highlight mark on each of the files and folders you want to copy over. Once you have them highlighted, press triangle to pull up the pop-up menu, scroll down to copy, and select it with the X button. To switch back over to your internal storage, press the right three stick or the right analog stick straight down. From the root of your internal storage, use the D-pad to move the highlight down to data and select data with the X button. This is where the RetroArch folder lives. Use the D-pad to move the highlight down to RetroArch and select it with the X button. There's no ROMs folder inside RetroArch. You'll actually need to copy those folders with your ROMs to the Downloads folder. Navigate to it with the D-pad and select it with X. From inside the Downloads folder, press the triangle button to pull up the pop-up menu. Use the D-pad to scroll down to Paste and select Paste with the X button. Now that you have your ROM files copied over to your internal storage, you'll need to copy over your system BIOS files. To access USB storage again, press left on the D-pad. From the root of your USB storage, navigate down to the system folder that you copied over previously that has your BIOS files. Select it with the X button. Once you're inside the system folder, you can actually mark all of your system BIOS files at one time by pressing the right one and the right two buttons on your PlayStation 4 controller at the same time. That's the right shoulder and the right trigger button simultaneously. Just like before, pull up the pop-up menu by pressing the triangle button, then use the D-pad to navigate down through the list of choices to copy and select copy with the X button. With all of the BIOS files copied, again, press the right three button or the right analog stick straight down to access the root of the internal storage. Again, use the D-pad to navigate down to the data folder and select it with the X button. Use the D-pad to move the highlight down to RetroArch and select it with X. This time, use the D-pad to scroll down through the list of folders to System and select System with the X button. And finally, inside the System folder, press the triangle button to pull up the pop-up menu. Use the D-pad to scroll down to Paste and select it with the X button to paste the BIOS files here. You can go back to this process of copying over new BIOS or new ROM files anytime you need to. Press the PlayStation button on your controller to go back to the PlayStation 4 main menu. Before you launch RetroArch, there are two things you can do to free up both memory and space on your PlayStation 4. Press the Options button on PS4 Explorer and select Close Application with the X button. At the confirmation prompt, select OK with the X button. And you don't need the Cores Installer application any longer as you'll be doing those from now on using the Online Updater. Navigate to the RetroArch Cores Installer, press the Options button, Use the D-pad to scroll down to Delete and select it with the X button. At the confirmation prompt, select OK with X. Select RetroArch from the main menu so that we can configure the settings. With your PlayStation 4 connected to the internet, from the main menu of RetroArch, scroll down to Online Updater and select it with the circle button. Some of these are mandatory and some optional, but I recommend that you run all of these updates. Update installed cores, update core info files, Update Assets, Update Joypad Profiles, Update Cheats, hey, no judgments here, Update Databases, Update Overlays, Update GLSL Shaders, and turn on the On Demand Thumbnail Updater. This will give you box art for titles that you install into RetroArch. Once you have all of these taken care of, press the X button several times to go back to the RetroArch main menu. You'll want to import your games into the RetroArch interface so that you can play them from playlists in the left navigation. To do this, from the left navigation, scroll down to Import Content and select it with the circle button. The first listing is Scan Directory. Select that with the circle button. You'll be prompted to either select your internal storage, which is Data, or USB 0, which is your USB external storage. In this case, we've got the games copied over to Internal Storage. Select Data with Circle. You'll see the RetroArch folder here Use the D-pad to navigate down to RetroArch and select it with Circle. 
Use the D-pad to move the highlight down to the Downloads folder and select Downloads with a circle button. This is where you want to conduct the scan. From the list of choices, select Scan this directory by moving the D-pad highlighter there and select it with circle. Be aware, if you have a lot of ROMs to scan, this can take from several minutes to several hours. Once all of your content has been scanned, press the circle button several times until you get back to the RetroArch main menu. If you look in the left navigation, now you'll find that there are folders representing the various consoles that I've scanned and imported content into RetroArch with. If you scroll down to these folders and drill into their content, you'll see that the online thumbnail updater is going to add the box art for each of the games that are listed for each of these systems. Pretty cool, huh? To launch the game of your choice, use the highlighter to scroll to the console that you want and select the game you want. In this case, let's try Super Mario World. Select it with circle, select run with the circle button, and you'll be presented with several core possibilities. I'm just gonna pick the first one on the list here by selecting it with the circle button. Once you have your core chosen, select Run with the Circle button. And in no time at all, you'll be playing your retro game favorites on your PlayStation 4. And for even more great PlayStation 4 videos, check out this video shown on screen and linked in the pinned comment and description below. See you over there!